Welcome back everyone, today we'll be discussing the Jordan 1 patent bread once again. Specifically, we'll be discussing whether you should sell or hold the Jordan 1 patent bread and why that is. To preface this, if you guys enjoy these types of videos regarding the market, reselling, and even info on how to acquire these limited products, be sure to subscribe and enable post notifications, this way you're 100% updated. Furthermore, remember that the limited endurance restock will take place on January 3rd, Monday at 4pm Eastern Time, 10pm CET. The link and password will be tweeted from the Endurance Twitter. Also, don't forget to follow Gargantua AIO's Twitter for the restock on January 5th, next Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. For those who don't know, the Jordan 1 patent bread releases on December 30th, tomorrow. Retail will be $170 for men's, those of which we'll be focusing on today. Stock between all sizes combined worldwide is just over 140,000 pairs. Compared to the recent Jordan 11 and Yeezy Beluga, this stock may seem very small but this is actually just about the average stock that we see for a Jordan 1. Now that doesn't mean that these are going to be an easy cop however as demand on these is absolutely insane. Of this stock in fact about 20,000 men's pairs have already released through exclusive access on Nike sneakers in the men's sizes alone and about 5,000 pairs for the grade school sizes alone. I'm not even sure how much already released through finish line. If you're watching this video before the drop feel free to watch my how to cop otherwise let's continue. In order to determine if the Jordan 1 patent bread will be a fruitful hold, we will cover an estimated range of what the sneaker will settle at after the drop, and also when shipments come in, essentially the pair is going into circulation, whether they're expected to increase post-drop or even hypothetically decrease, along with how much specifically over specific periods of time, and finally, what type of margin are we looking at for these in terms of holding them. Not the retail to resell initial margin, but rather just the hold margin over X period of time. Basically, are these going to be worth your time or not if they even go up. Kicking it off, let's discuss the estimated range that these should be settling at. To begin with, stock for these is just about average for a typical Jordan 1. Although the demand on these is not as impressive as the Jordan 11 Cool Gray, based on the current sale volume at this very high pre-sale, it's certainly still very, very high. Much more than the Jordan 1 Atmosphere that we just recently discussed, and those had pretty high demand as well. In comparison to the majority of Jordan 1 colorways we have seen recently, these are certainly certainly looking significantly better in terms of demand, even more so than those Atmosphere Jordan 1s. This does make sense of course, considering the classic bread colorway is very iconic, not just that, but it's a fully patent version of which. With that very high demand combined with just about average stock, I am certainly expecting these to be very profitable with a great margin. Full throttle on these without a doubt on every single men and grade school size. The larger sizes specifically will perform the best as usual. But again, all are worth going for. Now, regarding a specific range, prices have already seen the vast majority of their pre-drop decrease following the early access pairs, flex app reservation pre-sellers, and even general early pairs. So this leaves the current average at about $380 between sizes 7 to 14 in the men's pairs. But of course, this is only the pre-drop average and it will change after the drop. So we normally see a notable change post-US drop. This one we normally experience what I like to refer to as the impulsivity effect. You guys should know what I'm referring to by now as we discuss this very frequently, yet it almost still always occurs to some degree. Regarding the impulsivity effect, if you haven't watched my seller hold videos before, sneaker drops specifically impact human impulsiveness significantly after an individual fails to acquire that desired product due to insufficient supply and too much demand. Therefore, on average, we normally see about a 10% increase of the pre-drop prices post-drop. Now that 10% isn't always the case, such as when a sneaker is already slightly overvalued. The Beluga release was actually a perfect example of this where they actually decreased by 5% post drop for the reasons I mentioned in my seller hold video and that's precisely what ended up happening. And now it looks like we've actually hit that negative post shipment average as well just as predicted in the video. Now on the contrary, a release where we saw the positive impulsivity effect was on the Jordan 1 Pink Atmosphere which saw the expected 5% increase post drop. However, I mentioned I was only expecting a 5% increase rather than the full 10% like we normally see for reasons I did mention in that video and that's precisely what played out. When it comes to these Jordan 1 patent breads, I'm expecting something very similar to where we should see a positive impulsivity effect considering the average stock combined with the very very high demand. However, rather than that full 10% or even that 5%, I'm actually expecting only about a 3% increase 
less than that 5%. I'm actually only expecting about a 3% increase, which is still a noticeable increase considering the pre-sale is so high already. So that being a percentage, it will be about $10 or so. In fact, the pre-sale being so high already is my primary reason as to why I'm only expecting this minor increase in value post drop. Nonetheless, I'm still expecting a positive increase rather than a negative one, although just not very significant considering they're already so high in value. Therefore, with that potential 3% increase in mind, if this is the case, this could hypothetically leave the average at about $391 tomorrow. Hence, I am planning to go full throttle on these for every single size. I'll also be going full throttle on the grade school pairs as well, just that we're focusing on the men's pairs for this video. Now, let's discuss what price it will look like when shipments go out in the one to two week range. So during this period, the vast majority of pairs will be going into circulation, aside from the amount of pairs that already went out through exclusive access, early pairs, and in-store pairs. Considering we have just about average stock on these, I'm not expecting any abnormal rate of decrease, but of course, I am still expecting at least about the average amount of decrease, especially since they'll be quite high after the positive impulsivity effect too. Therefore, I would expect an average decrease of about 10% once shipments go out. Nothing unusual here, just like many releases we discuss. This decrease after shipments could potentially leave prices at about an average of $352, which is below what pre-sale is currently at, of course, but nonetheless, still very, very profitable. Now that the average price range at those points in time are evident, though, let's discuss whether they're expected to increase from the post-shipment prices or even hypothetically decrease. When it comes to these, I feel a pretty useful comparison is the Jordan 1 Bread, Jordan 1 Patent UNC, and Jordan 1 Patent UNC to Chicago. Ironically, we already just discussed two of these in the Atmosphere Jordan 1 video, if you guys recall, so you might remember a little bit of those. First, let's take a look, though, at the Jordan 1 Bread from 2016. Similar to these patent breads, these started off with high resale in the mid to high 300s. It seems for the next two years, though, that prices did increase, but it was very mild. However, as 2019 and 2020 approached, that's where these really started to take off with notable increases. On the other hand, hand, we have the Jordan 1 Patent UNC. This is a great example illustrating that even a pair with high initial resale can still experience a pretty solid increase over a year's time and two years time. Even more attractive was the increase for the Jordan 1 UNC to Chicago patent, which was going for only about $210 and saw a massive, beautiful increase over a year's time and just continued. But granted, these were going for much less initially, which really allowed for that good ROI. Overall, with all three of these examples of pairs that share similar attributes, we could take away that despite the high current resale, there is still plenty of room for an increase. However, that increase, such as in the case of the 2016 breads, can indeed end up taking much longer than usual. On the contrary, it might not take too long, such as in the case with the UNC Jordan 1s. Regardless, it is pretty clear that at this current resale, these will certainly increase following these post-shipment prices. What's just not clear at the moment is how long that's going to take. Finally, regarding the whole Hold margin on these, essentially, are these actually going to be worth your time? While it seems pretty clear that these are certainly going to increase, this bread colorway could potentially take a very long time to reach a notable ROI, at least based on how long it took the 2016 pair, especially due to the fact that resale is already very high. Can the fact that these are patent leather, like the UNCs, expedite the increase? It is certainly possible, but we can't be sure of that. And for that reason, I really can't give these that high of a rating as I'd really like to. It really just comes down to the fact that resale on these is already so high, unlike the Jordan 1 Atmosphere, which was considerably lower, and this inevitably does affect the ROI, unfortunately. Overall, we have amazing potential for a great long-term ROI. However, I'm not expecting anything too great in the short term unfortunately, mainly due to this very high resale. Hence, I have decided to rate these a 6 out of 10 hold, which is less than what I rated the Atmosphere Pinks, which is still a good rating, above average, and that's primarily for the amazing long-term potential that these do have. I just wouldn't expect anything too great over the next year, and that's again because of this very high resale. I am planning to hold my pairs for a very long time, since I'm not expecting to get many pairs anyway, and I don't need the capital right now, so yes, I will be holding 
holding my pairs. Also, just a note in general, for anyone considering holding any items who do have low capital, you should never hold anything in general if you don't have sufficient capital to go for as many drops as possible at your full potential without holding back. If you need money to go for all drops, try to sell these as soon as possible. Let me know what you guys are planning to do with your pairs in the comments below. Since this is a discussion at the end of the day, I can't predict the future. This is just my personal analysis based on the data that I've acknowledged. We have a lot of brilliant minds watching the video right now, so I implore you to leave your notions down in the comments below. Anyway, that will conclude it for today. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed, or perhaps if you learned a thing or two. Remember that the limited endurance restock will take place on January 3rd, Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. CET. Link and password will be tweeted from Endurance's Twitter. Also, don't forget to follow Gargantua's Twitter for the restock on January 5th, Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Subscribe and enable post notifications. This way you stay 100% updated on all the hyped releases. Also, feel free to check out the links in the description below for reliable, fast, residential proxies and pre-verified Nike sneakers or Adidas accounts. Last but not least, make sure to follow Keith Adam 10 and Personals for you. This way Way you guys stay updated on all urgent info like I was discussing today with that. I'll see you guys later. Have a fantastic rest of your day. And of course, good luck on this drop or if you already copped, congratulations.